that I wanted to be a rodeo announcer. I, uh, I was pretending to be one of my college rodeo practice pen. My coaches heard me, said, you need to announce our college rodeo. And I was like, no, no, I was much more about competing at that time. And they said, we'll pay you. And I said, well, I'll try anything once. And then when I did it, I got the same butterflies from behind the microphone that I did when I was at a buck and shoot. So from that point forward, other colleges started hiring me to announce their college rodeos. It's taken off from there. And I've never worked a day in my life. If I'm one of the lotto, I'd do it for free. Rituals, I mean, I have preparation orders and things that I do in order to get my stats and figures together. Probably the truest ritual is, ritual is to say a prayer. I, I really do ask God to give me the words in a way that the fan will enjoy hearing them and understand them. So if there's any one part of the ritual that is a definite, it's that prayer. It's tough to say. I, you know, when I look at the contest of rodeo, every one of them has a different element, different degrees of difficulty to each one. So for me to say, ah, I like the calf roping more than I do the barrel racing or the bull riding more than I do the bronc riding, that's just not fair because you would have to overlook something that isn't in the barrel racing, that is in the bronc riding, or something that isn't in the calf roping but is in the bull riding. So each event has its own different degree of uh, difficulty and different things that the contestant has to face. So for me to say, ah, that one's my favorite, I would be doing the other six in, in, in justice. Well, if you're coming to watch the rodeo for the first time, I would suggest two events. First of all, the barrel racing would be one because it's very simple to understand, it's a horse race. Okay, who can get around three barrels the fastest? And as long as you understand they gotta get around those three barrels and only make three turns, you can watch the clock, so it's a really simple event to understand. And then the bull riding is simple as well because either, there's just simply one rule. Ride with one hand for eight seconds. You're not confused by mark out rules or double grabbing and things of that nature that don't normally happen in the bull riding. So for a first time goer, I'd pay attention to the barrel racing and the bull riding. They're both really simple events to understand. When you say rodeo hats, do you mean cowboy hats or do you mean rodeo ball caps? Because I've got enough rodeo ball caps. You ever heard the song by Johnny Cash, I've Been Everywhere? Across the desert there, man, I've breathed the mountain air, man, travel I've had my share. I've got rodeo ball caps from everything from the Calgary Stampede to the George Paul Memorial in Del Rio, Texas, okay, from everywhere. For a rodeo, a cowboy hat, often referred to as our lid, we, uh, I'll have two to three different colors, probably a silver, a beige, and a black. That'll incorporate depending upon what color shirt or suit coat I'm wearing. Boy, there's so many things that's unique about this rodeo. If you go to this rodeo and you like it, and you say, oh goody, I'm gonna go see another rodeo, you'll be blown away how that other rodeo does not measure up to what you were accustomed to once you came here. But if I was to sing, single Houston out for anything, it's their it's the generosity. There is no place that gives back the way this place gives back. Now, all of them will have different charities. Maybe the Lions Club sells the soda and they get to keep the money from the soda. Or maybe it's, you know, it's a youth group that is picking up the parking lot so they benefit. But there's no place where charity is the number one reason for having a rodeo like it is at Houston. But everything is so first class here, everything that is done here is so state of the art, top of the line, it's very tough for any other venue to even come close to mimicking it. At Houston, nothing's wacky. We're all pretty serious about the way it gets presented and how well it's done. I mean, a very professional event, but sometimes wacky happens within it. I mean, uh, there was a time, and this is back in the Astrodome, where a steer wrestler ripped his britches open, you know, so he, everything the good Lord gave him was on site for everybody else to see. So that was kind of wacky. Uh, we've seen some guys spill in different ways, wacky. I, there was one time I tackled Howdy the mascot. I tackled the mascot. That was kind of wacky, and it wasn't during the show. But for the most part, we try to avoid wacky if we can, but if it happens, we embrace it. <sighs> One of two. So I grew up big Southern rock fan, big Southern rock fan. And before the bands got so big that they had their own pre-recorded video that would introduce them, you know, when we were in the Astrodome, we introduced all the bands, me and my other colleagues. So for me to be able to say to like 50,000 people in the Astrodome, ladies and gentlemen, Leonard Skinner, that was like a huge high for me. The other one was the last performance ever in the Astrodome because it was George Strait 
and we were trying to, to, to sell a record number of tickets to the event. There was no rodeo held in conjunction with it. It was just the last thing that ever happened in the Astrodome of Save Hurricane Katrina. But the last paid event was George Strait concert. And I will never forget the mood in that room. It was so electric, so absolutely electric. Thanks to all you Visit Houston fans, so we appreciate you asking some tough questions, some fun questions, but most of all, we want to see you at the rodeo. So come see us.